So we're going to move right into the welcome today. And uh, for those of us who are joining via FCAT, I just want to mention that this is not our usual practice, but we don't have our music minister, Anthony, with us today for personal reasons. And so we are going to try to do our best to offer God uh, some kind of musical praise. But we're not sure how that's going to come out, but we're going to do our darndest to, to praise God with song. So with that said, let me just say that whoever you are and wherever you may be on your own life's journey, you're all welcome here at Sunderland Congregational Church, a part of the United Church of Christ. And so this is my first Sunday back after a two-week vacation, and uh, it's really good to be back. It was nice to go away, but it's nice to be back again. And two weeks ago, last Sunday I went to church, um, but two weeks ago was the first time, and I really do not know how long, that I hadn't gone to a Sunday service somewhere, somehow. Um, but I did make up for it. Over in Portugal, on these vacations, we were all in the, the old city parts of these towns that we visited. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not being uh, light, um, you know, I'm not being... Uh, I don't mean to be mean-spirited. These roads are really old goat paths. They are really just these tiny little things going up and down these mountains, all cobblestone, all slippery, all bouncy. Uh, the sidewalks are tiny. The roads are tiny. Any of you people who have all of these big country pickup trucks, you would not be able to drive where we went over this past couple of weeks. And so you've got all these people, all these tourists on these tiny little cobblestone sidewalks right next to these little tiny cobblestone roads and we're traveling everywhere with these Uber drivers. These guys are straight out of you know where. They fly like a bat out of you know where over these cobblestone streets. I got my wife and two daughters in the back seat of the Uber. I'm up in the front with the driver and I'm holding on for dear life just to try to not, you know, not go through the window when we have this expected accident. But these guys, they know these streets forward and backwards. They're zooming around blind corners. There's people this far away. I could hang up, you know, but I could say hello to the people walking down the street. And so we're zooming at like 50 miles an hour. You can see the car in front of you was stopped, but they go 50 miles an hour and then they stop. And that just happened over and over and over again. And I saw God more than once. And so all I didn't, you know, flying doesn't freak me out. Um, a lot of people don't like to fly. I have no problem with flying. But boy, did I say my prayers when I was in that front seat with those Uber drivers in Portugal. So the message is, is that sanctuaries are beautiful, uh, but we can pray and be in contact with God anytime, anywhere. And I definitely was with those Uber drivers in Portugal. And that kind of ties in with today's message that we'll talk about a little bit later uh, when we invoke the wisdom of Solomon in these trying times. Uh, but God is here, but God is also everywhere. And so with that said, did I just kind of lose something here? What happened? The Uber driver got back at me. All right, so this is still on. Oh, but I thought it was just... That's now it's... That's, now we're back? Huh. Okay, if that happens again, just wave your hand at me or something. All right. All right, so with that said, since uh, we don't have an opening hymn, I guess I'd invite you to come up to light the candle, and we'll just uh, we'll say a little prayer. Oh, we are going to try and sing the hymn. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. You're right. So the opening hymn is Red Hymn number 66, For the Beauty of the Earth. Brenda? Let's just do two. <laughs> so, Brenda, if you want to lead us off in, in number 66, Red Hymnal.
thanks, Brenda. That wasn't half bad. Maybe we can do more verses after this. All right, if we could now turn to our bulletin for the call to worship. God is gracious, merciful, and trustworthy. Let us join our voices to offer thanks to God who gives life purpose and meaning. We are nourished by the living bread that came down from heaven. We are fed in body and soul by the faith we share. We are called to faithfulness in response to God's faith in us. We are called to faithfulness in response to God's faith in us. Come then, as people inspired by the wisdom of God and the living bread of Jesus, to worship as this called community. Now coming together as this community here in person, those joining us via Zoom, and later through FCAT, our unison prayer. God of an unbelievably generous love, your works delight our hearts, minds, and souls. Your word expands our thoughts and expectations. Grant us the wisdom of Solomon to discern between good and evil, so that we may choose paths of shared blessings. Your grace and mercy draw us away from the limitations and distractions of the world so that we may be fed at worship by the living bread that came down from heaven. Your example for us to follow in the life of Jesus sets us on a path of generosity, compassion, and understanding. Our faith can help us to change the world by first changing us. Dwell within and among us now so that the sacred hour may remain with us throughout the week ahead. Amen. So we have guests that came in. Our music minister is, uh, is unable to be with us today, so we're winging it. <laughs> Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 2, 10 through 12, and chapter 3, 3 through 14. Then David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned for seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firm, firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, only he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness in righteousness and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on this throne today. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out and come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this of your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, 
and have not asked for yourself nor life or riches or the life of your enemies, but ask for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word indeed. I give you wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Never know how this will turn out, we'll see. Never know. Never know. You're not a princess anymore. Where's your crown? Gigi's got it. Oh, Gigi's That's right. got you it. Could... Would you like to come on up here? And, what, and what's his name? Hi, Jacob. How are you, Jacob? I'm Randy. Nice to meet you, Jacob. Okay. Would you like to sit down? This is Sephora. So Jacob and Sephora. Jesus has a, a little story today, and Jesus says that he is the, the bread come down from heaven to feed us. Um, so you know, like you, you know what a fluffer nutter is, or a peanut butter and jelly, the bread, on a sandwich. There, yeah. And so you know the bread that goes on keeps the jelly and the peanut butter together. Jesus says, "I'm like that bread that comes down from heaven, so He feeds us." Okay, and when you get fed and you get to be strong, well, you, you kind of want to show that you got you know, the, all that strength in you. <laughs> One more time. You grow bigger. When when you eat, you grow bigger, right? Right. You grow bigger. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I I I'm gone, huh? I'm back. Oh. Yeah, so Jesus wants to help us be bigger and stronger. And so, um, did you watch any of those things called the Olympics where they were swimming and running and throwing? Did you watch any of that? Did you watch any? Oh, oh. Did you watch it? When, 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 when dinosaurs... You saw dinosaurs in the Olympics? <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so so when we when when the Olympics are on, you know the people who trained really hard, they wanted to show the world how good they were at doing all this stuff, like throwing stuff and and right and kicking soccer balls. And, and bouncing balls like basketball. Yeah, they did all those fun things, right? Because they were so strong, they wanted to show the world. Well, when Jesus comes to us as the bread that feeds us. He wants to make us. Well, um, um, you kick soccer balls. You kick soccer balls, right? You kick soccer balls, and so Jesus, when he feeds us, he. he... <laughs> I'm going to get electrocuted. You're just worried about the wire. All right, so. Um, so what, what's happening is, is um, Jesus wants to make us show how strong we are too when he feeds us. And just like the Olympics, they love to show how strong they are even maybe win medals. So what we're trying to do is when Jesus feeds us, we try to show the world that we've been fed by Jesus by acting really strong in our faith, by doing all kinds of good things. Okay? Okay. All right. Nice to meet you. All right. Okay, Jacob. Have a good one. Oh, there you go, Jacob. It's important. All right, you're going. Okay, off to Gigi, your grandma. Here you go. Have a good one. All right. Now, let's see what we got going on now. I'll tell you, for the first Sunday back, this is rough. <laughs> um, so special music. We don't have our Anthony. So Brenda, we need a solo from you, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, without the special music, we're going to turn on to our, our prayers. And uh, before we hit the yellow sheet, I'd like to offer uh, prayers for Ukraine. Uh, that's kind of really getting scary over there at present. Oh, shucks. Um, so 
I don't know what's going on. Um, but over in Ukraine, they've invaded Russian territory. Um, that got Putin really angry. And I heard that they, they took some tires and lit them around one of the cooling towers at the, uh, at the nuclear power plant in Ukraine. And God forbid there's a meltdown there. Uh, but that is really getting scary there. So we, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all the ones that are being forced to fight who really probably don't want to fight. And we pray for peace there. We also want to remember uh, the Holy Land, Israel and Hamas. I heard that they might be, and I've heard it before, but I'm praying that it's really true. They're right on the verge of a ceasefire, but at the same time, there's this stuff going on with Iran and Hezbollah and Lebanon. And so I just hope that that doesn't explode and lead to more violence and death and destruction. So we keep all of those people in our prayers. Uh, we also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. And also like to offer a prayer for Anthony's father, who is now hospitalized down in Springfield. Um, and his father's name is also Anthony. So we, we pray for Tony Tracia as well, um, that he may recover quickly and fully. Um, and that um, Anthony can uh, deal with all these things going on in his life as he's also getting ready to return back to a public school teaching. So before we hit the yellow sheet, do we have any special prayers from anybody here or from at home? Yes, please. Okay, let us turn to our yellow sheets and we're just saying those first names on the yellow sheet. So let us offer our prayers for Alan, Alice, Amy and Tom, Angie, Angie, Antonia and family, Art, Bill, Bill, Bonnie, Chris and family, Cheryl, Cindy, Edna, Frank, Fred, Grayson, Jeff, Jim, John, John, Kathy, Leslie, Liz, Lynn, Marcia, Mary Jane and Joe, Michelle, Mike, Pauline, Richard, Rick, Sandra, Sandra and John, Steve, Stephen, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And may we now turn inward for just a few moments of silence in the midst of our public worship, to offer God our prayers that are important to us, but we just choose not to say them out loud. So just a few moments of silence.
bread of heaven and food of eternal life, strengthen us to live as Christians should live. Encourage our faith and our commitment. Fortify the bonds linking us all together in Christ Jesus as this church. And dare us also to see others as people loved by God and as part of the people of God and as people who should matter to us as Christians, whoever they are. As Solomon prayed for the wisdom to lead the people of Israel, may God's wisdom guide us so that we may know how to bring healing and peace into our lives and into the relationship even among those of nations. We ask you also to hear the prayers that we have shared with you today and answer them as you alone know best. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us now come together and share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we gather to offer our prayers and our worship to God, let our hands also be employed in the ministry of the church. Let us offer ourselves and the fruits of our labors so that God may bless and multiply the good that can be accomplished through them and through us. May our offerings contribute to the common benefit that we share in as this worshiping community in this beautiful sanctuary and also for the good of all God's children in spiritual or material need. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and also as our conditions in life allow. And offerings will be accepted now if you so choose, and they can also be mailed here directly to the church. However you choose to offer, if you choose to offer, it is appreciated. We're going to sing the doxology. So I invite you to please stand. And Brenda, if you want to lead us in the singing of the doxology. From whom all blessings flow, praise God all creatures here below. Praise God for all that love has done. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, one. Amen. Accept, O Lord, these offerings now to be placed here in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. When I was over in Portugal, I never realized how arid it is over there. And there was an awful lot of brown and not too much green. And when we landed and started driving back home on Route 2, all of this lush green of New England, it just struck me, and it made me feel good to see the green again. And sometimes we take ordinary blessings, like all of this beautiful growth around us, the trees, the lawns, the flowers, sometimes we take ordinary blessings for granted. And I think that that's a lesson there, that all of those ordinary blessings are still blessings, and we don't realize it sometimes until they're taken away. So may we open our eyes more to see the constant blessings of God that surround us. May we tell God of our appreciation for all of these ordinary blessings. And may we continue to offer God our praise here as a church community 
and we offer you our thanks for your continuing donations to this church, and we ask God to bless them so that we may allow the rest of the community to know that God is always around us, that God blesses us constantly, and even when we sometimes forget to say thank you, we are a thankful people. In God's name we pray, amen. And our reflecting hymn today is Red Hymnal number 276, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Oh, it is? Wow, this is not going well today. <laughs> All right, let's see. Great. Oh, now I'm back on. <laughs> Oh, do you play the piano? Oh my gosh, yes. Absolutely. Do, we don't know, do we know what number? If you find the hymn, I'll play it. Oh, hold on, we're going to find it now. Uh, it's a blue hymn number 72. All right, second reading. I'll play it the verse through once. So today's gospel is taken from John chapter, 5, uh, chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I'll give for the life of the world is my flesh. And the Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. And those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. And just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whosoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and then they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Anyway, 
I was away for a couple of weeks in Portugal, and, and I don't really travel all that well or all that often. And besides this trip that my daughter said, you know, Dad, you're getting to be almost 65. You got to do these things now if you're ever going to do them. So she talked me into going. There were nine of us that went. It was two families. And um, I was really kind of worried when we left because I, I need my downtime. And, and uh, I was just afraid we were going to go as two families and come back as nine individuals after spending all that time together. Uh, but we went. It was really quite a nice time, a surprisingly nice time. And so when we went over to Portugal, uh, it was just a whole nother world for me. Um, I, I ventured only a little bit over into Canada by Niagara Falls a couple times in my life. And that has been every time that I've needed my passport, just crossing over to Canada for a little bit and then coming back. And so basically I vacation in New England when I vacation. And so going across the Atlantic to Portugal was way out of my norm. It's just something that was strange to me. And when we went over to Portugal, uh, it's an old country, and it kind of strikes you. You know, you know that it's European, not American, but when you go over there and you spend time in these old parts of the city, it kind of just strikes you. And the other thing is there's a language barrier. And so um, as we we're walking in all these old parts of Portugal through all these different towns that we went to, it seems like around every corner, there were just so many people. It's tourist season over there, and there's so many people, so many restaurants, so many shops. And you know, they're European, I'm not, and, and we should be more different than we are, but we weren't. There was a language barrier. Thank God over there, uh, from grade school on up, they forced kids to take English as a second language, and so they're much more able to communicate with us than we are with them, because I think we're a little bit conceited over here in the good old US of A, and we expect others to know English, but we're not expected to know any other uh, person's language. And so they could communicate with me, but the only thing I could say back to them was obrigado, thank you. You know, they would, they, they've been going to school, learning English, and they were talking to me about all these things because, boy, my wife bought a lot of tile. I don't know what the big thing is about tile, but we came home with a lot of tiles. And so the only thing I could say was thank you. And so obrigado was about it for me. And so this, um, the, the, there's different people. They're European. I'm American. There's all these other tourists coming from all over the world. There's a language barrier. But, you know, when it comes right down to it, we're not all that different. We had a wonderful time. Uh, one of the, the first nights there, we went to a Greek restaurant, and I don't know why we, why we chose Greek, but we went to a Greek restaurant. There was this beautiful, wonderful, just gregacious uh, Greek woman who was our waitress. And, you know, she's from Greece. We're in Portugal. We're Americans. And, you know, it just it felt good to me because right now I get the feeling that there's this message that if you're different, you should be separated. Uh, if you're different, you know, there, there's something wrong with being different. And over there, thrown into this, this Portugal that was so many people coming from so many places, so many languages, it just made me feel good that we could be all these different people coming together and still enjoying one another. Um, and so that was kind of a gift to me to experience that. Uh, so all these people, the other thing is I didn't realize that all these towns in Portugal, it, it's all mountains, it's up and down. There cannot be heart disease in Portugal. There is no way there can be heart disease in Portugal. There are too many stairs and too many mountains in Portugal for there to be heart disease. So my daughters are, are pretty big sports fans and they wanted to watch the quarterfinal match of the United States in the, in the women's soccer. I think it was against Japan. It was on a Saturday. And so they go to their computer phones to find out where they can watch this uh, soccer match. And so they, they found a sports bar um, from their computer phones. And you know, a sports bar over there was simply a bar with a television. They, you know, it's not like sports bars in America. So the computer phones told them how to get to the sports bar. It did not tell them that to get to that sports bar was like climbing Mount Everest. And so we, we start walking, and I got this picture, and I don't know, it doesn't blow up all that well. I'll, I'll show the, the people at home first so they can see. Um, but these stairs over there in Portugal, um, this is from like base camp one. You know when you go up Mount, <laughs> when you go up Mount Everest, there's like base camps? 
Well, this is base camp one, and we had been walking and walking. We finally reached base camp one, and we're looking back, and there's all these stairs. You can't see how, how many stairs there are behind you, and you can't tell how many stairs there are in front of you either. And so we're just walking and walking. I don't know, you maybe want to pass it over so they can see it on Zoom too. So we're just walking all these stairs, and in that picture, you'll notice that off to the side, there's a doorway. Somebody lives there. And so all up and down these stairs, there's all these doors on the side. And so these people have to be so healthy because they do this every single day going up and down those stairs. I can't imagine being like the, the, uh, the mailman or the Amazon delivery guy on that route because that would be just, I, I don't know how they would do it. I don't know how you buy a refrigerator and get it into any of these houses. But these stairs are just like a whole other world. And you're, you're living like in, in antiquity in the present. The old is part of the new. It's not like going off to a museum. You are living in the old in the present time. And that kind of gave me a new perspective because, you know, here in America, we, we want things now. Uh, the other day I had to order something for a church, these little plastic inserts that go in a binder. I placed the order on Amazon one afternoon. The next afternoon it's on my stairs. That's what we expect, this overnight, immediate now. But over there... I had this, this different realization that we're, we're part of generational time. Uh, went into a restaurant down by the river in Porto and, and went, uh, the back wall, it caught my attention because there was just like this little nook and in that little nook in the back wall was a shrine. I don't know, it was some kind of a saint or something in that little nook. And next to that, there was a little plaque. And the plaque said that that wall dated from the 15th century. That's the 1400s. So the wall of this restaurant was there since the 1400s. We went into a lot of basement restaurants. And I guarantee that those basements were at least from the 1400s as well. And so you're living in antiquity. And it kind of helped you to realize that it's not just about us. People in previous generations have passed on this world to us, and it's our responsibility to pass on this world to those who come after us. And so the church always talks about we are the people of God. All of us are the people of God. You know, Jesus is born as a human being. He's not born as a Jewish person. He's not born as a Christian. He's born as a human being. God comes into the world for all people. So all people are God's people. And so we, that, I think, the church does a really good lesson in you know, conveying that. But when I went over to Portugal, I, I kind of got that, you, you're forced to realize this generational idea that all are God's people. The people in the past who give us what we have and what we pass on to the future. And so when we think about it like that, um, in the Old Testament and in repeated again in the New, is this idea that one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. So we're one piece of a puzzle that I think only God can see the puzzle, but we're one piece of that puzzle. So one day is like a thousand years. There is so much that focuses down to this one day. We may not see it, but we are expected to appreciate every day, every moment, because there are ordinary blessings and there are constant responsibilities. And so in that timelessness of God, there's connection. We're all together in this gift of life and what we have received, hopefully we can pass on a little bit better. You know, when I was a kid, so I don't know if they still have to do it or not, but every kid in high school had to read Thornton Wilder's, um, you know, Our Town, the play. And I think we did it because it was easy to produce. And so if you wanted to produce Thornton Wilder, you had to have a chair, basically, and you could do um, Our Town. And in Our Town, one of the characters, her name is Emily. She says, does anyone ever realize life while they live it? Every, every minute. And then this kind of omniscient stage manager replies to her, no, saints and poets, maybe, sometimes, they do some. But that's what the church is trying to tell us, that every moment is a gift from God. And so when you have to you know, live in that moment, I know it's hard to do. It's almost like saints and poets, some of them can do it sometime, but we are called upon to recognize the blessing that is right now and the responsibility that is right now because we've received a gift from the past and we need to pass on a gift to the future. So this moment right now is extremely important. And I think Solomon realizes that in today's reading. So David is the Jewish king. He is the epitome of Jewish kings. He is the one that Jesus comes to fulfill as the Messiah in the image of David, son of David. So David is the king. And now all of a sudden, he's gone. 
He's, he, now the kingdom is passed on to his son Solomon. And Solomon realizes the weight of the responsibility of this moment when he takes on the responsibility of leading the people of God, Israel. And so what he does is he turns to God and he says these words. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. And I think right now, we live in one of those pivotal moments of history. Just like Solomon taking over the kingdom from David, I think right now we live in one of those pivotal moments. As I already mentioned in our prayers, I'm scared to death about what's happening in, in, over in Ukraine and Europe. I don't know what's going to happen there. Russian territory has now been invaded. That hasn't happened on this scale since World War II. Putin is terrified that he's going to lose his image of power. What will he do now that they've invaded his country? Will he actually allow for a meltdown at that nuclear power plant in Ukraine? What will happen when that fallout doesn't respect borders of lands and it blows into Poland or Belarus or maybe even into Russia and then flows in the atmosphere, maybe even it comes right over here? What happens when all these things happen? What happens when you talk about like, you know, over in the Middle East, that war that could expand beyond these countries now and maybe become a regional war, maybe something more? These things scare me. What happens with climate change? July, you know you were here on Sundays how hot July was. July was the hottest month ever recorded. And it has been the 14th consecutive hottest month ever recorded in the history of humankind. And so we're just getting hotter, which means that there are more wildfires. It means that hurricanes are worse. It means sea levels are rising. It means people who work outside, it's dangerous for them. It means there are extinctions of animals. There's all this kind of stuff going on. We live at a pivotal moment of history. And just like Solomon, because I don't think we have the capacity to know what to do, we need to turn to God and pray for God's wisdom. And even our leaders, they may not be humble enough to be able to turn to God and ask for help, so we need to pray for our leaders, our world leaders, and ask them for God's wisdom because we are going to have to live with the decisions that they make. And so let us pray as this church, as these people of God, let us pray for the wisdom of God to lead this pivotal moment so that what we have taken from the past and how have in the present, we may pass on even better to our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren in the future. Because we can either pass on something good or something destructive. This is the moment right now. This is a moment that is filled with potential and what we do with it matters. So may God in all of God's wisdom fill us with the knowledge in the way to move forward for the good of all people. And for these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. And our hymn of closing is Blue Hymn num number 320, and we'll try to do that um, a cappella. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Yeah.
All right. Um, I, my apologies for all of the uh, confusions in today's service, but uh, hopefully next Sunday it'll be all worked out with the better sound system, and Anthony will be back. But uh, whoever our guest musician was, thank you again for that gift of playing the piano for that previous hymn. Much appreciated for that. So before we go our separate ways, we'll share in benediction, and uh, hopefully you can see the, uh, the ordinary blessings even on a rainy, muggy Sunday afternoon. So do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God, says the prophet Micah. These are the marks of the reign of God in our world. These are how we continue in a spirit of worship throughout the week ahead. So may the grace and mercy of Christ fill our souls and our lives today. May God's wisdom guide us in all that we do and inspire us in all that we hope. So let us now go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do, among all whom we may meet. Amen. Now our congregational response hymn. Oh, now in peace,